and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Ilham Kadri, CEO, Science Co. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Lorenzo, for having me again. Thank you for inviting me to this fabulous annual meeting uh, in this beautiful city of Florence. Each year, I'm impressed. You are raising the bar, and each year, um, I go back home inspired, energized, actually, definitely. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to kick off the second day, uh, giving you a piece of wisdom from my own industry. Um, and I'm going to talk about how we can energize change in the chemical industry. At the end of the day, it's the mother of all industry, at the risk of feminizing it. And it's actually facing huge challenges. Um, at the service of your industries. You may be wondering, who is this company? Science Co? This is how we pronounce it, so think science. Science Co is one of the newest companies we just launched a few months ago in the chemical industry last quarter, listed in uh, the CAC 40. And I hope um, it's a spin-off of Solvay. I hope you remember Solvay as a company. Google calls the 1927 picture you see behind me the most intelligent picture in the history of humanity. This is Solvay conference we held since 1911 with uh, Ernest Einstein, um, uh, Marie Curie, Oppenheimer, and many more. And since then, we have those conferences. Solvay is one of the oldest and the most iconic chemical companies in the world, which I have the honor, actually, to lead since five years. And Solvay started its changing you know, uh, path since 160 years by inventing soda ash, enabling the glazing revolution. And then we went through the plastics revolutions, obviously. And more recently, we invested in the specialty polymers and the composite materials, uh, having a vision that the world will need high-performance polymers and materials, safer, lighter, and more sustainable solution. So a lot has been going on, changes in our DNA, leading to the most recent chapter of our history, which took place just a few months ago. In the past five years, um, we energized change from within the company. When I joined Solve, the, the analysts used to call it the sleeping beauty. I hope nothing is personal. Um, but believe me, this transformation was not a fairy tale at all. When navigating through crises like you in the past five years, we became more agile, more innovative, more disruptive, more focused and obsessed on our customers, on the challenges you heard from Lorenzo and from the video before me. 2023 will remain a special year in my life. You don't wake up a morning and you say, I'm going to split a company which is 160 years old, right? With 2,400 descendants owning 30% of your shares. And we did it because we believe it's the right thing to focus on our customer, create more value. So December 11th took place the IPO of Science Co. And here we are, a startup. A startup with 13,000 people around the world, a global company focused on material science at the service of sustainability, including the energy sector. And 25% of us are customer facing, and I like it. You can find us in one out of two EV cars. We are invisible, we are under the hood. You can find us in 85% of the vehicles flying in the sky. We are in your green hydrogen production. We are invisible, and without us, there is no um, batteries. Our thermoplastic composites are used in your pipes to transport energy to make oil and gas more efficient. You find us virtually in every smart devices you have in your bag or handbag. So let's switch gears and tell you how this invisible chemical industry can enable a cleaner energy, for example, in clean mobility. Our job is to replace metal in every, virtually in every object, right? Be it in a car, be it in a plane, be it in uh, your e-bike, even in your Formula One cars for the lovers of racing. No offense, by the way, for the metal producers here. 
By doing so, if the object is mobile, it's consumed less fuel, it's, cons uh, it's consumed less fuel, it emits less CO2, it's synonymous to sustainability. Think about it. With non-metallics, the weight of a car motor can be reduced up to 25%. The battery casing can, can reduce their weight by up to 40%. So this is synonymous again to lightweight in materials at the service of clean mobility. And we do the same in aviation. Many of you will fly back, you know, by, by plane. Look at your aircraft. If it's narrow body, a smaller aircraft, there is only today 25% of the chassis or the primary secondary structure is composite material. We can go up to 50% like the wider body. So we are synonymous to sustainable aviation on the top of bio and e-fuels, right? Composite materials save up to 25% of fuel consumption and CO2 emissions in, uh, in aviation. We are working on uh, flying automotives, right? So those are the air taxis, uh, which rely on 100% of our composite material. This is real, it's not a fiction. And more recently, we traveled with SpaceX to the, to the space so we can handle hydrogen, by the way, like we did in, in, in 1969 with Apollo 11. In electrification today, what you use in your battery, we commercialize polymers, PVDF-based binders for what we call Generation 2 batteries. Those are liquid batteries. We are investing a billion dollars, the largest investments we've ever done in the United States of America. Uh, for batteries, it will cater 5 million cars at maturity with the partner Orbia. And we keep innovating in that space. The world needs lighter, safer, no liquid, uh, cheaper, a higher density to give you less driving angst batteries. And that's what we are working on. We call it generation four and five. Those are solid batteries. They are sulfide technologies. They are, com they are coming in the horizon of 2028, 2030. And the first pilot is just up and running already, and it will be a reality. Chemistry is also energizing change in the clean energy sector. And uh, I believe that humanity will not reach net zero without hydrogen. Hydrogen is the new oil if we can make it affordable. I heard a lot of conversation yesterday about that, and we are part of the journey. We are part of the journey when you create hydrogen out of water. As Jules Verne used to say it in his uh, uh, fiction and novels, we are making it through, through a membrane. Ours is called Equivian. So those universe solutions make efficiently water, uh, out of water hydrogen. If you have green uh, renewable energy powered, it's called green hydrogen. But our new innovation enable a lower weight in electrolyzers, for example, and a faster system assembly and a higher thermal reactivity, among others. We also store hydrogen. Hydrogen is a beautiful molecule. It's the smallest one you can do out of the Mendeleev table, but it's explosive. So you have to do it and carry it with safety in mind. We do it with our composite material. As I told you, we've been already doing it in spa space exploration. And our thermoplastic composites, by the way, enable lower weight and recyclability. And we transport hydrogen, obviously, in your pipe with our high-performance polymers and liners. I like what the mayor of Florence rightfully said yesterday. Alone, you go faster. Together, you go further. Let's look at our collaboration. Um, five years ago, we started, and I'm going too fast, let me go back. Here we are, getting it back to order. Yeah, no. One more, one more. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, one of my greatest example and the top example on collaboration and co-innovation and the power of collaboration. With Baker Youth, we started our relationship 30 years ago. And our journey started with the move from rigid to flexible pipes, as you can see, and the switch to non-metallic. And as Lorenzo mentioned yesterday, the word needs secure, sustainable, affordable energy. And few key ingredients of the success of this relationship is the open book, is the trust, is relying on each other, is the co-innovation. Actually, we marry our expertise 
in advanced material sciences with obviously Baker Hughes manufacturing excellence, engineering know-how, and scale-up expertise, which creates value for all stakeholders along the value chain, including at lower total cost of ownership. And on the sustainability side, we have the same vision. We committed to net zero, both of us, and we know we cannot do it without each other's. And five years ago, this strong collaboration, this resume, right, allowed us to dream bigger, to start looking further, and for example, to think about next generation of flexible risers. This makes the pipe up to 40% lighter, improve the permeability by 10 times, lower the corrosion, and obviously the, the, total, cost, uh, the total cost of ownership. So yes, Baker Hughes is an enabler of the energy transition, for the entire industry, as you can see in this conference, and we are eager to be part of it. Another belief of mine is that you cannot transform your industry, our value chain, without transforming ourselves. Over the past five years, that was my job within Solvay, to transform the company, to, be, to become your partner in energy, energizing this change. And as you remember, the chemical industry is scope three, <laughs> so it's important. We cannot ignore it, and here is how we raised the bar internally. So today I represent one of the hardest to abate industry in the world. Five years ago, as a newcomer, I asked my team, present to me a climate ambition which scares us, right? Where we, we can be proud if we achieve it. They gave me one time Paris, right? We did twice Paris. We exited coal in three plants in Europe. We implemented the company-wide global, uh, global carbon pricing. So we tax ourselves, including in China. Uh, and we priced it, by the way, at two times European price. We became SBTI certified on scope three, and we did it all while being more profitable, we almost double our return on capital employed. Yes, sustainability means profitability. And if we can do it, you can do it. We are now able to commit on carbon neutrality by 2040, believe it or not. Over the past five years, our energy transition projects you see here removed one million cars off the road, internal combustion engine cars off the road every year. We need three times this to reach uh, carbon neutrality, 100 of our sites in China are already uh, neutral. So, so far it looks good on scope one and two. What's about scope three? We need scope three to represent 70% of my emissions. To accelerate scope three, you need a collective commitment. The chemical industry has done a lot. It decreases greenhouse gas emission by 50% since the 90s, while it doubled its production. But this is not enough. Only 18% of the companies are actually on track on their carbon neutrality program. So we need change. Lorenzo said this. We need change in mindsets, behaviors. We need action, and action in turn demands energy. Another quote from Lorenzo. At Science School, we are delivering on this country, so we relentlessly work with our suppliers. We embark them, we bring them, we show them the way to do business with us. And the best way to do it is to build the product's carbon trustability, which we have now a program. Upstream, we are also working with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation on circularity, which we want to reach uh, the 20s, 20 percent 20 by 2030. Just as we need to work closely with our suppliers and customers, we also need the collective commitments from the authorities, and I know many are here, and investors. We need uh, simplicity in regulation. We need fast permitting. Permitting is still insane, specifically in Europe. We need investors to recognize the good guys when they do a good job at the portfolio manager's level. We play our parts, but we need more support to go faster, bigger and better, and we need to scale up fast. What we would be without fundamental research? Every two years, the Ernest Solvay Prize reminds us that science is at the heart of everything we do. The last winner is the Professor Omariyagi, he's a pioneer researcher. I called him two weeks ago. 
a new revolutionary application for the future. His research is about clean energy technologies, CO2 capture, hydrogen storage, water harvesting, gas purification, simply everything we discuss during this conference. And I love it, we are proud to reward the best of the best who are going to give us new ways of thinking, disruptive ways of, the, of doing. And as you can see, the three laureates are already in Nobel Prizes, so watch us. We are becoming the glo Golden Globes of the Oscars, so we like that as well. Um, like Lorenzo stated, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, it's all about people and people and people. And we do this for the next generation, for our kids, who needs indeed to live their life with full potential. And I truly believe personally that we, have, we are the last generation that have the luxury to make a choice, make a choice of the people and the planet. Thank you very much.